Hello everyone, welcome to ECMath. I'm Mr. Eck, and today we're going to talk about exponent rules. Uh, so the first place that I think you should go if you want to really study up on the exponent rules is your textbook. And I'm going to step through these, but I really think it'd be worth it for you to go to page 21 of your textbook and just uh, kind of read through this list of rules. I'll show you the whole chart here uh, of, of properties. They're all, it's a nice like, place to go look. Um, but let's get right into it, because I know there's some of these rules you're really familiar with, and some of them you maybe aren't, um, and that, that might be either new to you or you just haven't used them very much in the past. And the first uh, kind of new rule is one that is this very first front on the page here, the negative exponent rule. That probably shows up uh, the most of all in Math 4, and it says this, basically. You have something, uh, a number to a negative power, b to the negative n, that can be written as a fraction with the reciprocal um, of b to the n. So b to the n is in the bottom. And you just put a 1 on top. And there's a couple examples over there. Uh, shows up all the time. And there's two consequences of this rule that, that are also true. And I wrote those over here. If you have a fraction with uh, uh, some number to a negative exponent on the bottom, that can be rewritten as... Uh, the 1 kind of stays, or you still have a 1 over 1. The b to the n can move to the top. And then that's often written as just b to the n. And similarly, if you have a fraction with multiple components, so you have a negative exponent on the top and a negative exponent on the bottom, that can be rewritten like this. Uh, a to the n under b to the m. So each piece can switch places. So those are kind of the, the three ways that we see the negative exponent rule. Other exponent rules that are important uh, that show up, zero exponents, anything but a zero power is one. That's one you probably know by now. Product rule, if you're multiplying two things of the same base, you end up adding the exponents. That's also one you probably know by now. Um, we use that one kind of a lot. And that works, by the way, even with negative exponents. So you can do negative 3 and 7, and you do negative 3 plus 7 to get 4 is the example they give. Um, here's one that, that I often hear folks say, oh, I didn't know that was a rule. Um, it's called the power rule. And the idea is if you have an exponent, they just say b to the m, that's raised to another exponent. So we're looking at powers of powers. Then you are able to multiply those powers, b to the m times n. So 2 times 2 to the 2 to the 3 is going to be the same as 2 to the 6. And if you're not sure why that's true, that's because it's 2 to the 2 times 2 to the 2 times 2 to the 2, and what's 2 plus 2 plus 2? Two? 2 to the 6. So that's why that rule was true. It's just an expansion of the product rule, but you don't have to think about it that way. It can be its own rule too. Quotient rule is like the uh, product or sum rule. If you're dividing two things with the same base, you can subtract the exponents. Dividing two things with the same base, you can subtract the exponents. Very common. I will highlight one thing. And it shows up in our examples too. If your thing is what we'll call bottom heavy, that is there's more exponents on the bottom than there is on the top, um, you'll end up doing 3 minus 7 and you'll get negative 4. We usually also, and this is like okay, we'll usually also do one more step and apply the negative exponent rule to write this as 1 over x to the 4. I would consider that probably the best answer. x to the negative 4 is also okay. Um, but yeah, the, you know, when you're dealing with subtraction, you can get negative exponents uh, involved. Here's another one that folks, uh, I'm just going to link these together, products and quotients raised to powers, that folks say, Mr. Rack, I didn't know this was a rule. Well, it is. If you have an exponent and you have parentheses, that exponent applies to both terms in the parentheses. Um, it's, you might Let's think about this like the distributive property. I'm going to not use the word distribute because distribute means something very specific about a plus sign and multiplying. Uh, but the n does apply to both terms. And that's the same if you have a quotient that is a fraction inside the parentheses and you're raising that to its power. That power applies to both terms. So that's just another thing to watch out for. Um, and by the way, let's look at this last example. Uh, we have a negative 3 and an x. Notice how the power applies to both all three terms. That goes to the 3. It goes to the negative, which you can really think of as a negative 1. And it goes to the x. And that's how they arrive at their answer. Uh, you can also group the 3 with the negative. It's really like a negative 1. 
and negative one of the third stays negative, which is why the final answer there is negative. All right, so those are the rules, but I'd encourage you again to like go to this page, uh, write down anything that you don't know by heart in your notes, and maybe practice them a couple times, read through the examples carefully. So those are the exponent rules, and you're, you're in theory now equipped, but I'm going to close this video by just doing a list of eight examples from the book. I picked kind of the even pro uh, number problems, so that when you do the odd-numbered problems right next to them on homework, you'll have something to look back on. Um, but, you know, and if you think you're, you're okay with some of the easier problems, I'm going to ramp up in difficulty, so you're welcome to skip to the end uh, if any of the ones at the start seem a little too simple for you. But I am going to start right here with something that's uh, pretty simple. We have x times y to the negative third, and I'll tell you that the mistake a lot of students make is assuming that the negative 3 applies to both terms. The thing is, is it doesn't unless there are parentheses written. So this is really, think about it as x times y to the negative third. It's a better way to approach that. Uh, and then this is, you could write it as x uh, times 1 over y to the third. And I'm doing a couple more steps than you might need to like show on your paper. Um, but it, this is why that's true, negative power. And then we have x over y to the third, which is how I would write my final answer. So that's how I would approach something like that. Next problem. So we're going to go through these pretty quickly. x to the negative 6 to the fourth. All right, so when we have a power of a power, those are multiplied even though this is a negative six. Um, so you can write this as uh, x to the negative six times four, which is x to the negative 24, which I would solve or write as a final answer as x to the or one over x to the 24th. So that's how I would solve this guy. Another way that uh, I just thought of that you could solve this is say, ah, work from the inside out x to the negative 6 is the same as 1 over x to the 6, and then that is raised to the 4th. That's the same as 1 to the 4th over x to the 6 to the 4th, or 1 over x to the 24th by the same product rule. You get the same answer both ways. Uh, if I was grading this on a quiz, I would actually say uh, that you're able to go straight to this answer unless it's literally a question that says show all your steps. Uh, I think those are steps that you're able to do uh, in your head. But that depends, of course, on, on you and, and what you feel you need to show and, and what is uh, challenging, I guess, to you. Okay, uh, so I have a big parentheses expression. We're going to get a little trickier now. Negative 6 over y to the third power. Um, we talked about one similar to this when we we're talking about the exponent rules. Um, I'm going to think about that negative as being a negative 1 multiplied to the front. You don't have to. You can think about that negative as being attached to the 6. By the way, that's something that Math 4 students often forget, uh, is that this negative 6 over y is the same as negative 6 over y. Um, so the negative, I'm going to treat it as a negative 1 out front. Think about this as negative 1 to the third times 6 to the third times 1 over y to the third, if you really break everything down. Uh, so then this is going to be negative 1 gives you a means it will be a negative out front. 6 to the third over y to the third. And I will say something that you're going to really like. I don't need to see uh, 6 to the third as its numerical expression. Um, if you get a, a number with an exponent, I think it's okay in an exponent problem to just leave it there, even if it's something as silly as 2 squared. If you want to leave 2 squared as 2, that's as um, 2 squared, that's fine. If you want to write it as 4, that's also fine. The reason is I think it's ridiculous to leave 2 squared as 2 squared, let's be clear. But I also don't really know where to draw the line, like what about 2 to the 6? Do you know that? So I'm not sure where I draw that line. Uh, so I'll just say leave them all as exponents if you want, and 6 to the third is fine. Oh, by the way, I've made it look like the negative is kind of on top of the fraction here. That's fine. You can also write it as negative 6 to the third over y to the third, or like negative 1 times 6 to the third over y to the third. Um, you know, where the negative is, the negative could even be on the bottom if you really wanted to confuse people. Um, they're all equivalent, and I would accept all of them. Uh, the one thing that you would need to avoid, let's say no, is saying, oh, negative 6, and writing it as like now something like this because that has now changed the meaning. That, that doesn't work in quite the same way. 
um, I need to see that expanded out. All right, uh, so we're getting into another one. There's a couple of ways to approach this. This is part of why I like exponent problems so much is that you can approach them in many different ways. Uh, here I have three X to the fourth over Y to the negative third power. That's a negative there. Um, my favorite way to approach this is to say, treat that negative as taking the reciprocal of the whole fraction. So then this is going to be the same as Y over three X to the fourth to the positive three. Now I've gotten all the negatives out of the way. That's to me is like the, the hardest thing is negatives. So let's get those gone first. Now I can simplify this down. So I would have y to the third over three to the third x to the twelfth. Why twelve? Because I'm doing three times four. It's a power to a power. And you can leave it this way. This is fine. You can also write it as y to the third over 27 x to the 12th, because that's what 3 to the 3rd is. I'll take both. Um, do be careful. Sometimes I see this 27 or 3 to the 3rd floating its way up there because we, we kind of get in the habit of having numbers on top, but numbers can be on the bottom too. Uh, and so don't think that that is necessarily, that's, uh, necessarily the way to do it. Ho ho! I bet you didn't think we were going this tricky already, um, but yeah, this is the kind of problem that I think really is fun. Now here, again, I could do different orders. I could say, you know what, I'm going to multiply this 3 to every single thing. But here's why you shouldn't do that. It's going to make your numbers way too big. If you do this 3 in, you have to do 3 times 14. I don't even know what that is. I know I could figure it out, but I just don't want to. So let's see if there's an easier way. The easier way is going to be to simplify the inside first. So I'm going to uh, kind of group the pieces. I have the numbers. I have the, oh, no, I have the A's, and then I have the B's. So I'm going to look at the numbers, the A's, and the B's separate. Negative 30 over 10 is going to be negative 3 on the top. Uh, I am still going to make myself a fraction, but I do think I'm going to have some things on the bottom of fraction. Ooh a to the 14th over a to the 17th. I'm doing 14 minus 17, so that's negative 3. I could write a to the negative 3 up here, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write it down here as a to the positive 3. One thing you could think about is that 14 of these a's cancel with 14 of these a's, and you're left with three a's left on the bottom. That's how I like to think about it when I'm doing that uh, division and it's kind of bottom heavy. All right, but now I'm doing this division. I have b to the 8 over b to the minus 2. This is where I start to do the actual rule. This is the same as b to the 8 minus minus 2, because it's a fraction. And that's going to be b to the 10th. Think about this as b to the 10th over 1, so that means I got b to the 10th on the top. Oop, that a little too large. Now, this is all multiplied to the third power. So now you can simplify that. We have negative 3 to the third b to the 30th, and a to the, be careful here, some people do 3 plus 3, especially when it's the same number, we, we get mixed up and write 6. This is going to be a to the 9th. We're doing 3 times 3. And I would like you to tell me that you know that this is the same as maybe like a negative 3 to the 3rd, b to the 30th, over a to the ninth, it just feels like I want to know that you know that negative 3 to the third is negative 27, not positive 27. Um, so go ahead and kind of simplify that as well in this problem. Um, yeah, so something like that. Get rid of all the parentheses, I would say. Next problem. So now I have two sets of different negative exponents, and there's a couple different approaches here. I notice they're not the same on the top and bottom, right? It's a negative two and a negative three. So I can't bring them all together into one kind of super exponent. I see that if I bring this in, that'll actually become positive. So that's what I'm gonna try. I wanna get rid of these parens first by bringing the exponents in. So on the top, it's gonna to be x to the negative two times y the positive 4, because negative 2 times negative 2 gives you positive 4. We're doing the power to power rule. This is then going to be over x to the positive 6, negative 2 times negative 3, 
y to the negative 3. Now, what I could do is uh, move these around, right? I have two negative exponents. I could put them on the other side. Ooh, stay negative, please. Uh, but I'm actually going to, I think, contract the x's and contract the y's first. So for the x's, I need to do negative 2 minus 6, which is negative 8. So this is going to leave me with x to the 8. Remember, it's when it, on the bottom. It could be x to the negative 8 on the top, but it's going to be x to the positive 8 on the bottom. And here I have y to the 4 minus minus 3. That's going to be y to the 7 on the top. So this would simplify to x to the 7th or y to the 7th over x to the 8th, and that's where you should stop. Just a couple more examples before we go. Um, so here's another one. I see I could, again, bring the 4 in, but I don't really want to multiply 4 times any of those numbers. I also right away see there's some parallel structure with 5s and 5s and 6s and 6s and, and stuff. Uh, so I'm going to deal with that first. That feels like how this was intended. Um, I'm going to do, right, the exponent here should be 4 minus minus 4. So I think uh, whoever wrote this problem was trying to get people to cancel the 6 and the minus 6. If I was writing this as a, as a distractor, that's what I would do. And I would say, hey, kids, is this equal to 0? Well, it's not equal to 0. Um, so we're doing 4 minus minus 4. That's actually 8. So it turns out that I'm going to add these exponents kind of were the positive versions of the exponents and so this is all this is going to be x to the 8 y to the 10th z to the 12th all to the negative fourth now i'm going to deal with the four i still have some unpleasant numbers the negative is going to make this all on the bottom of a fraction and i'm just going to go ahead and put them there right now this is going to be x to the uh, 8 times 4, which is 32, uh, times y uh, to the 10 times 4, which is y to the 40, and z to the 12 times 4, which is 48. And that's how I would leave it with things on the bottom of the fraction. And finally, a real monster. Uh, <laughs> So, a couple approaches to this thing. First, I do notice that there's a zero power. So this entire term with the zero power can just go away. That's just going to become one. I'm not even going to write it. I'm not even going to pretend that that was ever there. Um, I see a lot of multiplied negative exponents. And so instead of trying to move things around up and down a couple times, uh, I think it's best to bring all those exponents in. So the 2 applies to all three terms here. So I'm going to keep having a fraction. And it's going to be uh, 2 to the positive 2, x to the positive 6, y to the positive 2. Then I'm going to do this negative 2 to these terms. I'll do that in red here. So that's going to be 2 to the negative 2 x to the positive 12, y to the negative 8. And it's okay that these are the 2s aren't leading in the front right now, by the way. Uh, and then finally, let's do the bottom part. So this 2 has to go to all three terms also. Now, this is a positive 2, so this is nothing's going to be weird there. This is going to be 2 squared, uh, x to the negative 8, y to the negative 12. Okay, I see a couple things. First thing I see is that uh, of all these two squares, two of them are going to go away. Uh, I could either say, okay, these two cancel out because I have a positive and negative two, or I could just say these two cancel out because they're on the top and bottom of the fraction. Uh, and that's, I think, what I'm going to do. So those are gone. Then I'm going to rewrite everything else with the... Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have moved this two because that's going to go to the bottom anyway. How do I do that? I want to be smart. Work smart, not hard, kids. These two are going to reduce out with each other because it's uh, 2 plus negative 2 is 2 to the 0, which is 1. That 2 stays. Or it's, I know there's a 4. Uh, now I'm going to take everything that had a negative exponent, so that's here, 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 and move them to the other side. So let's rewrite it. So I'll have x to the 6, y to the 2, x to the 12, and then I'll have an x to the 8, 
y to the 12th from the bottom, and then on the bottom, I'll have a 2 squared and a y to the 8 from the, the top. I could, and again, I could have condensed these differently. Um, maybe I should have, I'm not sure. Now I'm going to condense things. So let's group the X's. So here's all the X's. And let's group all the Y's. So here's all the Y's. Uh, so this is going to be, I think this might be the last step. I have 6 plus, uh, 12 plus 8, which is going to be X to the 26th. I have a 2 squared. That's going to stay on the bottom. I'm tired of writing 2 squared. I'm going to write a 4. And here I have a Y to the 2 plus 12, that's 14, and then I'm dividing by an 8, so I'm going to do 14 minus 8, and get y to the 6th. And that should conclude this problem. So again, just be organized. You could work this out in a lot of different ways. Um, you, you'll get the same simplified answer all the time, but there's a lot of different steps in the middle. This is a problem where I would expect you to show some work. Um, I would say, you know, if we're going backwards, I'd want to see a little bit of work on this one. A little bit of work on this one, a little bit of work on this one, maybe even a little bit of work on this one, but it's like starting to get here. Here is where I think it's okay if you are feeling really skilled and brave to not show any work to just jump to the final answer. I mean, again, it's not a fine line, so please always follow the directions in your problem. But people always want to know how much work do they need to show, so that's my best answer for you. All right. Thank you for sticking with us for so long. Um, exponent rules are something that students always have a lot of questions about, and I hope that this has clarified some of them up, uh, and I hope that, that it wasn't too boring. So please leave your questions in the comments below. Email me with any other questions that you have. Um, don't hesitate to ask your teacher for help. Thank you all, and I'll see you next time.